Welcome to another episode of Extreme Metal Television. I'm your host, Simon. In this episode, we have an amazing interview with Skeleton Witch. We also introduce for a very first time our book segment entitled Wicked Words. But first, the underground spotlight falls on shrapnel. Talk a little bit about the EP. All right, so uh, I like to call it a demo because it's really the demo of the music we're gonna put on the album. But um, hence it, the title. Yeah, it's, it's really called Demolition, example. right? So, <laughs> but uh, it's four songs um, and it's what we have so far, and we just we banged it out and fucking recorded it in a basement, and that's what we got. I mean, it's a demo. If you were to describe your music to somebody that hasn't heard you before, what would, how would you explain it? Uh, lots of energy. Uh, Faster than you can imagine. Fast. Yeah, I feel like energy really lacks in a lot of bands. Yeah. You think you can imagine fast, but you can't really imagine fast yeah. until you go to a shrapnel show. We got the we got you know attitude and think a lot like of people cheetah, can relate to a that. Cheetah on cocaine, oh that's all fast. So. So what do you guys think about the the new age thrash revival, the new classic metal revival? Like, what do you, what are you guys' thoughts towards that? It's fucking awesome. I, I love all these bands that are trying to keep it real, you know, keep it like real, genuine, political, uh, personal music. Because thrash, the the thing is, like, it's all about the attitude of thrash. It's all about you know personal, intimate shows, and the. You know, a lot of the time it's political discourse and um, just keeping it real, you know? And it's, the energy is just amazing. So what's, what's next for Shrapnel? Uh, what's next? Um, well, what we have planned is uh, we're going to get a whole bunch more demos uh, so you guys can have them. And uh, we're gonna play a show with Onslaught and Artillery at the Palomino, November 16th. Stoked about that. Uh, we got a couple more shows, but that's gonna be our last Calgary show. We're gonna hibernate for a bit, write an album, then we're off to Vancouver. We're getting out of here. So. Welcome to the list. This time we're taking a look at the five worst heavy metal album covers. Doomsday for the Deceiver is my favorite Flotsam and Jetsam album, but the cover has always puzzled me. Now if you take a look here, well, we have what appears to be the creature from the Black Lagoon teabagging the devil. Now if you really look closely, you can see that the Deceiver is so terrified of the creature's chode that one of his eyeballs is falling out. Pantera has one good album cover, and even that's debatable, but nothing is quite as terrible as their debut album, Metal Magic. This looks to be some sort of rejected Thundercat character, maybe Lionel's overly touchy uncle, pantera -o. Why does he have a belt? He doesn't have any pants. He has a belt and no pants. That's just fucking weird. A little backstory on this one first. Gravedigger was an incredible heavy metal band from Germany. Then in 1987, they dropped the grave from their name and became a terrible pop metal band. And then they woke up from whatever coke-filled haze they were in and became Gravedigger again. And then the world was once again a good place. But before they did that, they released an album called Stronger Than Ever. Now what we have here appears to be some sort of Terminator with a duck face. Now, if you look closely at this duckinator, you can see he has a hat, not unlike another cartoon duck. You know what? On second thought, this isn't a terrible album cover whatsoever. It's fucking awesome. Sweden's Wolf introduced us in 1999 with this terrifying album picture. 
Now, while I do like the jacket that the werewolf is wearing, I think if he tried to howl, the only sound that would come out would be derp. Bye bye, derp wolf. Riot's second album, Narita. Let's just take a moment to look at this beautiful mess. The seal headed thing is Riot's mascot. He has appeared on many Riot albums, and his name is Johnny. He even has his own Facebook page. On this album, he appears to be a sumo wrestler. Now, of course, that makes perfect sense considering Narita is an airport in Japan, and that airport was apparently built on an ancient burial ground. So let's take a look at this album cover, shall we? Airplane, airport, that makes sense. Bones, oh, burial ground, that makes sense. And a seal headed sumo wrestler. You know what? I think that might be racist. Now the worst part about this is this album was released on Capitol Records, a major record label. So someone in authority had to sign off on this album cover. Someone at Capitol's art department took one look at this and said, you know what, I think this thing is going to sell a shit ton of records. Well that's it for the list, thanks guys for watching, and until next time, see ya! Hello, welcome everyone. I'm JP from Metal Rules and welcome to the very first episode of Wicked Words. This is a brand new segment here on Extreme Metal TV where we're going to be featuring books. Books about heavy metal, extreme metal, and all sorts of great reading that you can add to your library. For this very first installment today, we're going to be looking at a classic book that I've been proud to have in my collection for a long time, The Gospel of Filth. This book came out in 2009 and was co-written by Danny Filth of Cradle of Filth and Gavin Baddeley. Gavin, of course, is the preeminent Satanist and scholar based in England who's written a number of books on the occult. And he uh, contributed along with Danny to this fine book about the dark arts. So as you can see, it's a fantastic coffee table book. The book follows the history of sin, uh, decadence, sex, drugs, rock and roll, lust, horror cinema, film, anything from dark, dark culture that you can imagine. Uh, it's hundreds and hundreds of pages long. It's a gorgeous book, just absolutely loaded with visuals. As you can see, they're uh, certainly not for kids. You don't want to leave this lying around on the coffee table for your wife or children to see. Gavin and Danny go through a thousand years of dark art culture and how it relates to heavy metal. It's a fantastic book. I learned a lot about where bands got their names from, especially when we're talking about the old times of Lovecraft and guys like that. So definitely worth adding to your collection. The Gospel of Filth is now available in stores. Skeleton Witch have been good friends of this show since the early days. Scott Hendrick even hugged me once. Oh. <laughs> Skeleton Witch always has time. They always have time. EMTV's Cage had the opportunity to catch up with the boys when they were here in Calgary. Your last album was in 2013. Um, do you have, are you guys writing another one, planning to release another one in the near future? Or? Yeah, it came out in October, so it's almost a year old. Okay. So we're kind of in the mindset of like thinking about writing a new record and like, you know, have been writing some kind of riffs and stuff like that. Uh, but we're, we're thinking about it, like it's, it's definitely in our minds, but we have some stuff to do. Like we're going to be back in Canada, actually, in the spring. Excellent. Maybe. It's kind of a weird thing. Maybe can't really talk gonna... about it, but oh, uh, so you can't tell us if you're headlining or supporting. We or... might we might be back in the spring. I'll tell you that. Question from a fan: Is it a you or somebody else? From someone else. Oh, okay. Um, is it a skeleton that happens to be into witchcraft, or is it a witch that is dead and is a skeleton? It just it just heavy metal. Just heavy metal bullshit. Where, where did the name come from? Do you know, or was it just kind of... Yeah, I do know. Um, the band kind of like uh, played shows instrumentally, believe it or not, without a singer for a while, and kind of went under some like other names. We had a friend from Athens who was like, oh, you guys should name it Skeleton Wish. And I think the guys were like, yeah, that's real funny. And then they were like, man, we can't really think of a name. And, and that's how the name came about. <laughs> Do you have any 
any advice for up and coming bands, people that do want to tour for tour for a living? Or? Yeah, just make it your number one priority. Number like, one priority. you know, a lot of people um, we've toured with great bands, but they're like, oh, I gotta like finish college or whatever. And it's like, if you want to do this, college. exactly. If you want to do this, fuck college. Buy a fucking van, get in it, eat shit, and just do it. You really, you you know, in this day and age, there's no overnight success. You gotta go hard. Yeah. You know, the whole time. Put and, all uh, your eggs in one basket. Ex- exactly. Yeah. Fuck, like fuck the haters. Yeah. If you have a plan B, you're you're not in the right game. <laughs> you know, go back to community college. Get out of here. Um, if you guys could tour, or well, I guess you, if you could tour with any band, living or dead, who would it be? When you bring that dead thing, it's like, oh or man. Or broken like, up, or like change which band, which ideal lineup would you want to tour with? Does it, does it have to be like, like feasible? Like, we couldn't really tour with maybe like a Black Sabbath, but I'd love to. Maybe, I, I would say that's feasible, that's totally feasible. Okay, like, yeah, well, that's my answer then. Or, or maybe like living like a mortal, like we're huge like black metal guys. Okay. Like so. But you don't wear corpse paint. Where's no. the corpse paint? Well, yeah, we're not, we're not European. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of like some, some of you. kind of lose the black metal credentials. I have some. Did have you, some didn't you hear the riffs? Didn't you hear the riffs? It's the corpse paint. That's what makes it. It does. It doesn't matter what you play. It's just what you look like. You could go up there and like. I don't so you know. got the Jonas Brothers up there and they're in corpse paint. And then black, metal. black metal. Okay. That's I, that's the most. Yeah, I, I see. I see your logic. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll work on that. We'll work excellent, on that. Excellent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or not. <laughs> Well, that's it for another episode of Extreme Metal Television. I'd like to thank you all once again for joining us. I'd also like to thank the entirety of the Extreme Metal Television family. Remember, folks, January 2015, 70,000 tons of metal. If you don't have a ticket, get one. If you do, I will see you there. Remember to visit our website at ExtremeMetal.tv. And until next time, keep it metal.